good morning, everybody. We've got a nice flat level surface. We're gonna spend the next probably hour just bringing everything down there because once that next hole gets cut, machines are not coming out, except those guys. Anybody else think that heavy equipment is just cool? Probably rather be a heavy equipment operator than lead guitar player in the world's best band. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm gonna start a new series following the foundations of these two lots. They're identical foundations, but flipped or mirrored. And I have a ton of content. As I do this voiceover, we're currently getting ready to pour the first set of basement walls. And I thought what I would do is just break up this whole series into foundation from start to finish. This is on the same street as the Olympic project, but this will be two other projects that will actually probably start framing in the fall. But I'm just gonna break this thing up into small pieces and maybe do a little shorter YouTube video so we can really get more in depth into all of the methods. So here we go. Nice. Hey, not a bad way to start, what? That guy's pretty fast. The excavating contractor, Robert Lockwood, left us a nice ramp on the far end of this lot. We decided to just bring all of our foundation materials over. So all of the panels, all of the pallets with cleats and shoes and snap ties and everything extra from the previous foundation, which you haven't seen, but we'll follow that framing build as we go through the summer. This Incursol Rand VR90B, as in boy, has been just bulletproof for us. We bought it back in 2003. I think it's a 98 model, and it's just been really good for us. The other machine is an Incursol Rand 1056, gives us just a lot more reach. Okay, so let's just go into the basics on our footings. What we decided to do was use two by six footing boards, even though the footings themselves need to be a 12 inch minimum depth. Now we're gonna come back to that probably in the second video, but for this video, that's all we need to know. We just recently were recertified as forklift operators. I think it's class seven. I don't remember. It doesn't matter, it's in the paperwork. <laughs> the, the, what matters is we have our certificate. Okay, when you're coming down a hill with a load on the forks, come down backwards. Makes sense, it cradles against the cage. Uh, you might see me break that rule here and there with something where it's a real gentle slope, but for all of this stuff, we definitely wanted to come down backwards. Now, our excavating contractor, Robert Lockwood, showed up. That left-hand machine that he just got in, he's gonna take the bucket off the excavator. That's a Hudig, it's a Swedish machine. I'll come back to that. This thing is amazing. It is the coolest piece of equipment. Is that thing not the coolest? Robert Lockwood, let's see. I'm in the way, I'm in the way. Okay, I'll get out of the way. All right, everything is moved. We are ready. Ow. Ow. Wait a minute. Watch where I'm going. Oh, we are ready to start setting up this footing. So, and it's going to be 73. So I brought shorts. I can't wait. And thus it begins. This part of the process I really don't like, but it's incredibly important. I just want to get forming. We need to string property lines. So Kyle, I think, is putting some diesel in the little forklift down there. I mean, look at that Hudig backhoe. That is the coolest machine. I know, I've said it already too many times. Okay, so we're stringing the front of the property in line with the houses, the neighbors on either side. Then we drop two metal pins, and then we do the same on the side. There Kyle's catching the string line. This is the property line between the two lots that we're building on. Same thing, we drop a pin, that's the property line, and then we know what our setbacks are according to the site plan or the plot map. Depends on what you wanna call it. Once we have those two strings down low in the hole, then we locate the corners of the buildings. In this case, it's the right-hand side because we want 16 feet between this house and the one to the right. Now we need to pick a starting place. Because the right-hand side is a long run, it's 40 feet long, I'm gonna start there. Then I know from right to left, it's 64 feet across the back with no jogs. I'm gonna go ahead and line up the footing boards on my right to roughly where the foundation walls will go. We're gonna dial that in more closely as we go, but this is just to get a very rough right-hand side and then top. Those form two legs of a triangle. You can see it a little bit better there. So 40 feet, I think it was 40 feet, over there by the machine, 
and then on the left now or the back of the lot we're 64 feet. What we're doing is we're giving Noah a bunch of measurements to just start cutting for all of the jogs in the front. That'll keep him busy while we get things figured out and, and really get moving. You know what time you know what time it is. We're making good progress. Just the guys behind me. So let's get back to work. I like to do the stories for Instagram that I can essentially progress, update, and timestamp. Now in the back, we're just making sure we have the other property line because on the back corner of our cut, between those two houses, we just wanted to double check that we had the minimum. We thought we had a few feet extra over what we needed to be for the setbacks are five feet and we were more like seven or eight feet. So we're just verifying that. You want to do that at this stage, not at a later stage. I could tell you some stories from many, many years ago. Okay. So the excavating contractor, he's digging out the next hole. We've excavated down about eight feet, nine feet, seven feet, I can't remember, but you can see the bank. We're gonna end up forming 10 foot basement walls. Back to the footing. Now that the right hand side is in, the back is in, and Kyle has got the left in, and essentially the return, now it's time to pull square and stake those legs straight. Okay, so I'm verifying the length, and then we're going through and we're staking in that right hand side nice and straight. The reason for that is that's going to be a reference point for all of the east-west walls. Okay, that makes sense? Now we pulled diagonal or square and we realized we made a mistake. I think I did some math wrong on the back wall. So easy fix at this point, right? We can just shorten those footing boards and re-screw them together. Now it's time to straighten the back. We know our length is correct on that leg, the length is correct on the opposite leg, and the diagonal is correct. Now make those all straight. Since the right hand wall and the back hand wall are nice and straight, those are gonna be references for the north south walls and the east west walls, including interior strip footings. And because it's square, then every other wall that stays parallel to the wall you measure off of will naturally be square as well. Sweet. Lunch time, get some wasser. Check out uh, Billy Bob, building a sweet ram. There's the next lot, by the way. The idea was he was gonna mound some dirt so that we'd have a ramp to drive out of, but on the far end of the lot where we came down earlier, that ended up being in just the right spot. We thought that one was gonna have to move, but once we staked in the other lot, we could see that it didn't, and so he just quickly blew out this. Okay, so back to the footing. Now that everything is square and it's parallel along the perimeter, now we like to fill in all of the jogs in the front. These are the pieces that Kyle, or that Noah, had pre-cut for us. And that's gonna help us to go a whole lot faster. So at this point, it's just connecting pieces up and pulling parallel, any east, any front to back walls, pull off of that right hand wall, and any walls that go left or right, pull off of the back wall for parallel. I'll get into it in more detail in the next video when we start tying steel but the foundation walls do not sit centered on these footings. And I'll explain that in more detail then. If I try now, frankly, I'm just going to confuse myself. <laughs> so, okay, so now the footprint is entirely staked in. Now it's time to do all of our interior strip footings. So this is a basement, 10 foot walls on the front, and then they slowly step down on the right-hand side and left-hand side, and then in the back, they'll be two foot tall. So that's all basement slab that you're looking at, but there are a number of bearing walls throughout that. And those bearing walls call for steel reinforcement, rebar, a certain height and width. So that's what we're forming. They're all gonna get covered by the concrete slab, but they need to be there to be inspected. There's a variety of ways you could do this. Some guys would just form the footings and pour them. And then after they came in and ran all the plumbing and you know, all the groundworks, they would then dig out for their interior strip footings and then pour those with the slab. We've elected to just go ahead and form them and make our life simple. Later you'll see that we're going to sling rock around this and we're going to insulate, vapor barrier, all that stuff is in a future video. But for this video, basically we're just going to run all of our strip footings and each of those is going to be parallel to a back wall or a side wall. And that's why those that right wall and the back wall, the right hand wall and the rear wall, that's why it was so important to get those the right length, straight and square because those are now our reference for everything. 
So think of it like any other layout tool. You want your level to be calibrated or everything you build is out of plumb or out of level. You want your squares to be perfectly square or everything that you cut or measure isn't going to be correct. Same principle. We want this to be square. Unless of course the architect or designer calls for like an off angle corner, but thankfully, <laughs> thankfully we haven't had to do one of those in quite a while. That's a hassle. What complicates this a little bit is the fact that our foundation walls aren't centered on the walls, but most on the footings, but most of our measurements are from the outside of the stem wall. So you can't just hook the footing. You have to add the footing form board thickness as well as the offset on the footing to the outside of the wall. So this goes a little slower. You see us, we keep doing the math and adding up and we try to string things as long as possible. And now you can see how it all fits together. It's not difficult or complicated. You just have to focus. Now, as we're looking at that, Kyle's noticing something doesn't seem quite right. The one strip footing seems too close to that wall. And sure enough, when we set the pre-cut footing boards down, we flopped a corner. So super easy. This is why we like to use screws. All of our forms are screwed together is we just unscrew it. We flipped those pieces and then add it on. So, no harm, no foul. It only took about 10 minutes to fix. Now it's fixed. This is one of those things that you can't teach new people on the job site. Only experience works. Kyle's eye picked that up and that saved us. bad for some old guys and a new guy not bad at all now tomorrow we'll race to grade once again our schedule changed so I canceled concrete today for the other job anyway no one cares about that I don't care about that I'll probably get this thing pretty close for inspection tomorrow finish it up Monday and then whatever next week brings all I know is that in this day and age learn to improvise it's just been a crazy spring. This day it ended up getting up to 75 degrees. It was beautiful, but it basically since early October, or early October, well, yeah, since early October, no, more specifically since early April, we just keep getting rain and thunderstorms and it's just very unusual weather for us. Not complaining. No one wants to hear me complain. Let's just appreciate that beautiful piece of equipment there. Oh man, that hood ache. That thing is so cool. Okay, so there's how the foundation fits, that footing fits in the hole. These guys are working on the opposite hole because we got one and then the other formed and then poured and, and you're gonna follow the process all the way through. Thank you for following, by the way. I appreciate that. There's the footprint, nothing too crazy, just a few jogs and some interior strip footings, but really productive day. I was really happy with how much we got done. In the next video, I'm gonna show some footage from this foundation and the one next door. I'm gonna show you how we raise it to grade, how we use the laser to do that, how we fasten our forms together with impact drivers and screws and the specific screws that we like. We'll get into rebar tying, the rebar tying gun, steel mate vertical rebar holders. Oh man, you guys are in for a treat. I hope it's not too much. The next video is probably gonna be a little longer. I'd like to get all of that in and then we'll follow it up with a video where we pour the foundations, both of them, and you'll see a big mistake that I made on the second one, the one that they're cutting. Anyway, you have a lot to look forward to and I have a lot to relive. So over the next few weeks, we're gonna to get to all of that. Thank you guys so much for following. I really do appreciate it. If you want to, smash that thumbs up button, hit the subscribe, hit the little bell, or don't do any of that, whatever you feel like doing. But I really do appreciate you all following along. So we will see you in the next video. Stay safe, everybody. Hey, it is springtime. We're heading into summertime. Get outside, do some hiking. Go lay out, read in the sun, do whatever it is you like to relax. But hey, take it from me. This has been the most sp stressful spring I've had in a long time. But don't let it get to you. There will always be things to be worried and stressed about. Just take it one day at a time. That's what my brother keeps telling me, and it's true. Just take it one day at a time, count your blessings, make sure that you do some things that you enjoy doing. And remember, work is work. There is more to life than work. Easy to say sometimes, but that's the reality. 
Isn't it Alec Baldwin, as Jack Donaghy on 30 Rock said? On his deathbed, he, he would just say, I wish I would have worked more. <laughs> ah, nobody says that. So go spend some time with loved ones. Go watch a good movie. Hey, or, or, or. Just watch Awesome Framers videos. When you're feeling down, let us pick you up. <laughs> okay. Ah, thanks for indulging me. We'll see you guys in the next video.